what's up, everybody? I'm Justin Young. He is Josh Tuck. Welcome to Fast Break Friday on a Thursday right here on Hoopscene.com, on Twitter, on X, on YouTube, and all the places you find our content each and every week. And in this podcast, we go through all the visitors of note across the country as we do every single week. And as what we've been doing for the last, I don't know, is this like our sixth week now of going in a row of, of our Fast Break Friday on a Thursday? Uh, Josh, it seems to be the same case every week where we feel like – you're, you might be too young. Have you ever played pinball where you just keep pulling back the, the lever and you're, you're getting the pressure in the spring before you let it go and all chaos breaks after that? Oh, yeah. Like that's where we're at right now with recruiting because I don't feel like we've had like this huge weekend where we've had 20 or 25 commitments. Uh, and I feel like it's building every single week and kind of anticipating it to, to, to maybe this is the week. I don't know. Uh, but it feels like we're kind of working in that way as we look at the class of 2024. So uh, we'll see what happens. But how are you feeling, Josh Tech? You doing well? I'm feeling pretty good. This is like I, 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 you're right. The story is the same for the last few weeks. Where it's like, man, this feels like a really big weekend. It feels like a lot of stuff could pop. And then when stuff does pop, that kind of will send us down a rabbit hole of this is sure. you know this is what this means. This is what this means. But right now we're kind of in like the holding pattern where everybody's oh. kind of still feeling each other out and. No one like when we've had a couple big commitments, we'll get to those on, on Monday. But um, but for the most part, like it's still pretty, you know, a lot of the same guys are taking visits and we're kind of waiting. Like it almost seems like any week now we're getting we're going to get a commitment from some guys we've been talking about for seemingly the last, I don't know, four weeks or so. Well, I feel like we have a lot of guys, too, that are kind of coming to the end of their visits. Right. And so when you go through three or four of them, obviously you've collected enough data, enough information. They're like, okay, I feel like I can make a decision now. So yeah. it does feel like it's mounting. And a number of guys we're going to talk about today are on that list of guys that have taken some trips, a lot of trips really. And, and they're yeah. kind of winding down their process as we're kind of going through yeah. it. It's interesting because it feels like we're going, we've <laughs> gone through a lot of guys already who have taken a lot of it. They've gotten their visits done early. And like when we look at our, you know, our little big board behind the scenes, it seems like it almost shifts to a different group of guys kind of taking late a little yeah. bit later visits. So I think, you know, after this cycle of visits, we're going to have a bunch of new guys that we talk about for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think uh, as we kind of get into it, we're going to talk about our campus of the weekend. We got a couple of those actually this week. Uh, some visitors of note. We've got some commitment watches. We're kind of going to go through some of these and we'll kind of unveil kind of what we've been talking about so far on guys that we could see be making some decisions here. So, Let's go ahead and get things started here. Our visit of the weekend, really, our, I think we should say that better. Our campus of the weekend is LSU, and, and that yeah. one really certainly leads to charge. Death Valley is no stranger to big things on the football field in the fall. But explain to us, Josh Tech, why LSU is our campus of the weekend. Well, they've got – they've got we they were a campus of the weekend maybe two weeks ago or something like that because they had multiple top 100 visitors. And it's the same thing right here. They have Jakari Harris coming from Georgia. They have RJ Jones coming from Florida. They have Rakeez Passmore coming from North Carolina. A, a bunch of guys that we really like that we've liked yeah. for years, it seems like. Like this seems like the, hey, this is the hoop scene guys kind of category. You know what I'm saying? Like we did we did a My Guys show. This almost feels like it's our guys in, in a way. It does uh, feel we, way. we followed them for a long time. We've been big fans. I feel like we've bang the drum on a lot of these guys louder and earlier than most. Um, so this is like, you know, this is a campus of the weekend because they have a lot of great talent and a lot of guys that are, you know, commitment watches, but this is also a campus of the weekend just for us personally, because, you know, these are a collection of guys that we really like a lot. Well, Jakari Harris, is this his last visit or does he have anything else left on the calendar? I think this is his last visit and it's really good that they got him after in that they got him, you know, to come to campus after per, going to Purdue because Purdue was, the perceived favorite in that battle. And um, if it, if it, if it not for Purdue, it's probably LSU because they've been around just as much as Purdue has, it feels like. so. And then RJ Jones is in the midst of his. I know he's got a couple scheduled in October as well. And Rakeez Passmore, I feel like, has been on a visit every single weekend this fall and really staying um, pretty high on the recruiting boards for a number of programs. And again, yeah. you know, we, we saw Cameron Thomas go to LSU, have a lot of success as a score. Rakeez Passmore kind of cut from a – Somewhat of a similar mold of yeah. Cam Thomas as a bucket getter, a physical guy, athletic guy. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what happens there. Um, yeah, you know, honestly, if, if we had like a webcam for inside of uh, LSU's practice facility and watching some of these pickup games this uh, this fall, it'd be pretty fun with all the talent they're bringing in. And listen, yeah. if you talk to Matt McMahon and his staff, they gotta they gotta restock the shelves with some talent, and they're trying to do that with all these guys coming in for visits. So it'd be interesting to see uh, if any of these guys make a decision after this visit. 
Um, you know, another sneaky good campus that we like this weekend, Josh, Cincinnati. They got some guys coming into town that we're pretty high on. Uh, explain who you, who's coming in and, and why you like uh, why you like them as a player. Yeah, so I think the Bearcats are one to watch this weekend. They're they're not afraid of taking recruiting swings under Wes Miller. Sure. Obviously, they were really in on Isaiah Collier. They've been really in on a lot of high level prospects that almost you know, and during the Mick Cronin years and, and the John Brandon years almost seemed like we're way out of Cincinnati's reach, but Wes Miller and staff have been, you know, in these battles, you know, finishing in, you know, top fours, top fives, top sixes, whatever these kind of um, lists that come out are. And this weekend they have uh, 2024 guard, Jace Richardson coming onto campus. We really like him a lot. They have 2025 forward Sadiq White coming to campus. And as another guy, that's just a really good one, two punch that we both agree are, you know, really solid and will be really great big 12 players as they transition to that league. Uh, so weird to say, right? Cincinnati and the big 12. I know it's like, and that's, I mean, if you're going to transition to a league like the big 12, you have to take big recruiting swings. Like you're going to miss out on some, that's just the ebbs and flows of recruiting, but you're also going to hit on a bunch. So I really appreciate what they're doing as far as that goes. They're not shying away from battles because, you know, of past recruiting coaches or whatever, you know? Sure. I still wish I'd, I'd love to see them in the Big Tens, the Big Twelve. It would be such a better fit. Yeah. Who am I? Who am I? I'm just the guy that tries to think logically. I don't know. Uh, Jace Richardson to Cincinnati for the visit is kind of interesting, right? Like he visited Michigan State. Obviously, the son of Jason Richardson, a great uh, that played for Tom Izzo. That one um, doesn't surprise me at all. I don't want to say that, but certainly is interesting when he takes a visit to Cincinnati. Uh, is one that I wouldn't have thought of as a natural place uh, with him going to school in las vegas moves down to miami yeah um, so cincinnati to your point is doing a really good job of getting in there with some high level guys now at the time to see if they can close that and get that done sadiq white i think is one of those high upside guys that we really really are high on for the class of 2025 it just goes to show that they're recruiting nationally too they're not just kind of sticking locally or sticking like we know west miller has north carolina ties so the sadiq white kind of makes more sure. sense there but like they're not just kind of sticking to their their honey holes in any kind of regard. They're kind of going, and, hey, if you whoever wants to come visit, come on out. We're going to try and win you over. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the big timers. Last week was VJ Edgecombe was out there taking a visit. This week, Cooper Flagg is our notable visitor of the weekend. Going to be taking a trip to Connecticut, really the home school, if you will, for a guy from Maine. Uh, and we've talked about him on I can't remember which podcast it was. We kind of like. Uh, forecasted our, our odds for the three finalists for uh, for Cooper Flag, Duke, Kentucky, or not Kentucky, Kansas, and Connecticut. And uh, I think you and I are both similarly opinionated on this, where I think from a best fit opportunity for the Cooper Flag show rather than the Cooper Flag team, I think Connecticut actually makes the most sense for him to go up there and to really kind of um, wear the crown, if you will, as the real prize prince of the program. And um, he's taking a visit to stores this weekend to get a chance to go see them. I feel like a lot of people feel like Duke is the team to beat here, but how important is this visit for both Connecticut and Cooper flag? Well, it's, the, it, it's his first visit. So that's, that's huge for both parties. Like he's one, he's going to get his, you know, his first official out of the way. And then two, it's can, you know, Connecticut gets the honor of being like, Hey, we're first, this is how it's going to go. Like we're the reigning champs. We've got a bunch of mo uh, momentum on the recruiting trail. They've been recruiting like crazy for the last couple of years. Yeah. So this, I mean, this just feels like, I mean, if they if, he, if they end up winning him over this weekend, it wouldn't be surprising at all. I think I would put Duke as my number one still, and I'd probably put Connecticut as a not so far behind number two. Yeah. I still, I, I, my brain says exactly that. My heart yeah. says differently. I, I personally, I think I would like to see Cooper flag more at Connecticut just because I feel like, uh, listen, you win a national championship, you should go get the number one player in the country. I feel like that's the the um, the hierarchy of recruiting, the way that it should work. We've seen yeah. Duke do that so many times with, with guys. and I'd like to see Connecticut pull one off. And, and, and quite frankly, it'd be nice to see another guy, uh, like a, like a one-and-done superstar, not play at Duke or Kentucky for a while. Yeah, right. And, and no. hey, it, there is something to be said for that. They, I mean, they did win a national championship, and they are – at least hosting the number one overall player in the country. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they're capitalizing on the momentum that they've built. You know who else is capitalizing on momentum and in doing what you talked about with Cincinnati's recruiting nationally? We've talked about this before. 
Alabama. Like they are not staying within geographic norms. Uh, They're going out there recruiting the country, trying to go get the best dudes and, and guys that could go bet out there and be potential one and dones. Boogie Fland is one of those guys. He's uh, scheduled to be down in Tuscaloosa uh, for an official visit to hang out with Nate Oates and his program down there. Uh, with the tide and, and Boogie Flans is like the guy too that's been traveling all over the country, seeing the best programs there is, um, and, and really it just kind of speaks to what Alabama's been doing, uh, and we're really going out there trying to find the best guys possible yeah. and put Alabama basketball in the same plane that we've seen them with football. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, big big props to that staff. They're getting everybody on campus. They're getting their guys. I mean, and obviously they're landing a lot of good commitments over the last few years. So they're really building something there, and they're not trying to relinquish that at all. Missouri is another program that we've talked about quite a bit this year, whether it's commitments or whether it's visits. And, and this weekend's another five-star visitor going to be there in Columbia. And Jaden Quaintance uh, takes a trip to Columbia to hang out with the Mizzou Tigers and to see their program. Let me ask you, Josh, and this will be kind of a good – I like to always kind of like a do an age test with this podcast to see oh, the gap okay. between you. Like when you think of Missouri basketball, like what comes to mind? Like who um, comes to mind? Probably just the, the, their rivalry with Kansas and that being kind of like had gone away for a long time and then having re-sparked recently. So I think that's kind of what – honestly, yeah, when I think of Missouri, I think of Kansas, like honestly. I know they're going to hate me for that, but like that's one of the best rivalries in basketball. And for years it was kind of like, why is this not happening? Like, you know. Yeah. You know, it's funny like because when, when I was a kid, you know, I grew up in the Dallas, Texas area. I graduated high school in the early mid-90s. Missouri was a thing, man. Like Missouri basketball was was a thing, and I think they were part of the. Man, I can't remember what league it was. Was it like the Big Eight or something? I don't remember what what conference Missouri was in back in the day. But like that was a program that was a real power player, and it's been good to see them um, kind of return back to this as recruiting nationally. They're getting guys in. I think being in the SEC certainly helps, right? Like to to go after some of these players in the Southeast. Jaden Quaidens is not one of those guys. He's kind of from all over the place, but. Um, to go out there and recruit guys that are potential one and done guys and, and to really kind of put Missouri basketball, that is one of the best places to watch basketball in the country, truly, Columbia, Missouri. Uh, unbelievable atmosphere, unbelievable crowd support. Um, so it's not a big surprise to see Mizzou going out there and doing some big things. And Jane Quaintance, as we talked about before, this is not a class with great big guys. Like it's solid, but not not incredibly de- deep. Uh, Quaintance is a problem. I mean, he's an yeah, absolute problem. Sure. And, and and quite what, frankly, I think, what I think is interesting about this is that that they they've already landed Peyton Marshall to hold down the center yeah, spot. Yeah. Jaden Quaintance reclassed to 2024 from 2025. And that's another, you know, big forward that they're going after. So it's kind of like going back to how we, what we've talked about with Kansas for the last few weeks is yeah. they're not shying yeah. away from recruiting two really talented big men. Man, if that if that happens, you got to get the Richter scale working out there, man. That's a lot of for real. Humanity. Honestly, like yeah. maybe maybe they're both recruiting that way. So they can, when they play each other, it's just like one of those like Godzilla versus, uh, I don't know, Mecha Godzilla kind of kaiju matchups with just two monsters going at it. What's the uh, what's the new shark movie, Megalodon or whatever? Yeah, yeah, something like that, where you just get two gigantic monsters just battling up and destroying the city. Do you watch those movies? Or is, that, is that a genre that you're into? Um, I've watched like the older like Godzilla ones, but not like oh, yeah. newer kind of, you know, just kind of like, yeah, I guess like, yeah, yes and no. I just don't get it. It's not my jam. Not my jam. We saw a preview for the the shark one, Megalodon, or whatever it's called. I was like, who in the world? The like that is not in my purview at all. But like they made a second one. Those things are like they made a second one, which really blows my mind. Yeah. Anyways, I didn't think that we'd be talking about the Megalodon here. <laughs> Fast break. Well, you, you never know. You never know. You never know where it goes. You never know where it goes. Sudafed's still in my system, still trying to get my brain working straight. But uh, but here we are. You know, Florida State's a program that we've talked about a lot here on Fast Break Friday. Uh, VJ Edgecombe was the guy last week, was down there in Tallahassee this weekend. They've got Kahani Roos, and, and really it wouldn't shock me if it comes down to Florida State and Georgia here for Roos, a big man out of the, the D.C. area, I believe, and now he's down at IMG. A uh, really versatile guy, kind of, again, fits the mold for the type of player that's worked really well uh, with Leonard Hamilton in the past. Uh, I could see this one coming to a close pretty soon after all these visits kind of wrap up, so – the Seminoles are getting a chance to get their uh, their pitch in here before he starts to wind it down. Let's uh, talk about some underclassmen for a second, um, some 2025s and 26s that are making some visits. Um, what's going on in Indiana this weekend? We got, we got a 2025 forward Alex Alston coming to town. Um, if I am not mistaken, 
He is from the Chicago area, which is not too far from Bloomington, maybe about a three and a half, three hour drive. So it's kind of, you know, now I don't want to say it's like his backyard school, but it's not too far down the road. So I think he's just kind of dipping his toes in the water and seeing, um, seeing what, you know, the temperature is early on, which I appreciate. Go ahead and get some of these visits out early. And then by this time next year, you kind of have an idea. You want to narrow your list. And this is kind of what helps you narrow your list. Well, uh, Indiana has been no stranger to going out there recruiting pro level prospects. I think Alex Austin is one of those guys. Six yeah. foot nine. I think his mom's from um, Sweden, Norway, somewhere up there. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of background in that. You know that style of game can really, 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 really shoot the ball. I was really yeah. impressed with him when I watched him at sixteen U this year uh, in the EYBL. Uh, Tennessee. Tennessee has been interesting too. They've been bringing a lot of guys. I don't know if they've pulled off. I should have checked this before we did the show, but I don't know if they've pulled off a commitment quite quite yet um, after all these visits. But they've got Jeremiah Fears coming in uh, for a visit this weekend in Knoxville. I mean, listen, Tennessee is a place that a lot of guys want to go visit. Um, sure. It is a place that you want to see in the fall. I got to wonder, like, who's going to be the guy that always ultimately says, okay, cool, awesome. I'm like, where do I sign? Like, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's kind of percolating for the Vols so far on the recruiting trail. Uh, somebody's going to pop for them. I don't know if Jeremiah, Jeremiah Fears is the guy, uh, but it's certainly interesting to see uh, who else is going to be coming into town, into Knoxville. <clears throat> I thought I was doing better. The more I talk, the, this 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 head cold is just kicking my freaking tail, and it has been for the last week. So apologies if you've watched this far, if I haven't bored you away uh, with this raspy voice of mine. But uh, uh, hopefully by Monday on Commitment Catch-Up, I'll sound better. All right, here's one of my favorite ones of the weekend. Brandon Burry's uh, – or Braden Burry, excuse me, is uh, taking a visit to San Diego State. I think he's a stud, five-star yeah. guy of the 2025 class, versatile, monster, and, and quite frankly, a San Diego State. Like, they've always kind of recruited their type of guy. And now it's it's cool to see that they've got some five-star guys. They're taking some trips. I, you know, I would hope that their final four run, their championship game run – is way more impactful than a conference change for San Diego state is why they're getting guys to come in there. But San Diego state, listen, we need to think about them as a power. And I don't know if they think get thought about that nationally quite like they do out here in the West, but like that's a power power program and uh, sure. to come on, on a visit certainly solidifies that train of thought as well. Um, Let's talk about Georgia for a second. Caleb Holt, one of our super friends, super friends. <laughs> I don't know what that came from. Uh, we're super fans of Caleb Holt. Yeah. There we go. Uh, 2026 guy, top five guy in the 26 class is taking a trip out to Georgia. Um, let me play off of not so much Caleb Holt, but do you think Asa Newell could be a Georgia Bulldog? I think he's getting close to making a decision. I feel like. Yeah, Georgia I think he is being close to uh, getting close to making a decision. He's kind of had a lot of big visits on, on the. Um, it, just recently. And I think there's a lot of smoke kind of behind the scenes with a lot of people who are in the know that Georgia is the one that to keep an eye out for. So I think there is some, you know, significant recruiting momentum. They're also hosting a guy that I get to see a lot here, a recent state championship, Braden Liu um, from Alexander high school in, in Douglasville, Georgia. So they're also hosting him this weekend. In addition to Caleb Pohl, in addition to kind of, there being a little bit of buzz that Asa Newell could be close to committing to Georgia as well. So there's a lot of good things going on in Athens right now. Yeah. Good. That's why I want to bring up Asa because I feel like when you get one five-star that says, okay, this is where I want to go, I do wonder if it helps other five-star guys say, oh, maybe I want to be a part of this as well. So it's a perception uh, changer. Yeah, for sure. It could be some good momentum there. Um, let's talk about – let me jump down real quick to our Hoopsing Association. We saw – a couple of guys already take themselves off the board. Enrico Borio from Jacksonville was one of those guys. Isaiah Odaluk is off the board to uh, Chattanooga. And this weekend, Jay and Walker is taking a trip to Marshall. And really, man, when you think about that one, that's a pretty good fit uh, potentially yeah. for Jay and Walker for a guy from 101 Elite. Uh, one of the best uh, independent teams you saw in the country last year uh, is taking a trip there to, to Marshall. Um, if you read on Friday, our Fast Break Friday column, one of my visitors of the weekend is Malik Abdullah uh, from Columbus High School down in Miami. He's the running mate with the Boozer twins and now the Richardson brothers. Uh, but Malik is a guy that, man, I, we've, we've seen him a long time. Early days of Team Hardaway coming to Bob Gibbons. One of the best motor men there is in the country. Yeah. And for Iona to be a program that um, continually has success, no matter who the coach is, because they get a guy like Malik to, to come in on board. And he's been you know active. He's at Princeton, I think, last weekend it was. 
Uh, he's been active, going to a lot of visits. I think he visited FAU, FIU, uh, but been all over the board. Iona will get their crack of him. That's a significant commitment. As an Ethan Lathan taking a visit to Indiana State, um, and there's a reason why Josh Schertz is one of the best coaches in the country because he knows how to coach up guys, but this would be a significant one. I'm not saying that he's going to commit to Indiana State. Should he, he'll be one of the most significant, probably one of the first top 100 guys to commit to the program in decades, probably, for Indiana yeah. State. I have to go back and look um, there. Josh, I'm going to turn the time over to you for a second. Give me three guys that we need to keep our eyes on for a potential commitment coming up this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So that the first guy is just like <laughs> Curtis Gibbons, originally from Memphis, has, you know, according to reports, uh, has always intentionally planned on Memphis being his last official visit. He is going to Memphis this weekend. He is taking an official visit there. He just recently visited Indiana. He visited Texas. He visited someone else that I'm not remembering, uh, maybe LSU. Uh, sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, LSU, uh, Montverde guard, uh, very talented, good scorer, plays, you know, he has really come into his own as a point guard. So he's, you know, visiting Memphis from, from there, um, set, scheduled this as his last visit. Could be one to watch out for. I feel like that but all those signs right there are telling yeah. you something. Sometimes you just got to take what's what the world's given to you. And that's that's kind of where I'm going right now. Another guy to look out for is David Punch. He's visiting TCU. He's a yeah. he's a guy that really took off with Drive Nation this spring and summer. Um, from the Texas area. I'm not sure like how embedded TCU is in his recruitment or anything like that, but he's visiting this weekend. He's from the area. It could just be, you know. That's just something to look out for. I always look out for that. Like if you're a guy yep. that's going to a Big 12 school and you're from that area, just keep an eye on that. Last guy I want to talk about is a Georgia guy, Micah Smith. Um, he's been one of the guys we've been talking about forever. He's been taking a visit tour. He's been all over the place. He's ending it, at least, you know, from what we know, he's ending it at Clemson. Um, Clemson has had a lot of success with Georgia skilled forwards in the past. Um, so this one could be one to look out for because of that and because Micah Smith's ending his tour at you know, one of the bigger schools he's gone to so far this spring. Yeah, uh, this fall. yeah for sure. Well, we're going to cover all of them on Monday with our commitment catch-up. We'll go through all the players that made decisions, uh, whether it's on the weekend or on Monday morning, what seems to kind of be the case this year. A lot of guys making decisions on Monday morning uh, yeah. after the fact. Uh, so we'll have you covered either way right here on hoopscene.com. Again, hopefully by the time Monday comes around, I'll have an, I'll be back to full strength. I'll be off the Gatorade and Sudafed combo mixes that I have every morning. So hopefully, uh, hopefully be back at it and be good to go. So Josh, this was good stuff, man. Appreciate it as always. And we'll see you on Monday for commitment catch up. Yes, sir.